In this demonstration, you'll learn how to use ANSYS Turbo System to design and analyze a pump impeller's geometry. First, I'll produce my meridional flow path and blade geometry using Vista CPD. This geometry will then be passed to BladeGen, where I can modify and inspect the impeller's three-dimensional structure. Next, I'll use TurboGrid to produce a block-structured hexahedral mesh, which will then be automatically passed to CFX. In CFX, I can quickly set up a rotating machinery problem. I'll then solve the problem and extract the speed line and efficiency curve from the solution using CFD Post. In part one of this demonstration, I'll produce a three-dimensional geometry starting from mean line specification. Then, I'll create a mesh in ANSYS TurboGrid, transfer it to CFX Pre, and finally, set up a rotating machinery problem. I'll begin at Workbench and open up Vista CPD. This program uses a one-dimensional approach for preliminary design of a pump impeller. Initial designs are provided as a starting point. These are established through empirical correlations, the given operating conditions, and geometric restrictions. Using these specifications, Vista CPD will create a meridional flow path and blade shape that will achieve the target duty. Now that I have my preliminary blade design, I can convert it into a three-dimensional design. To do this, I'll couple Vista CPD with BladeGen. In BladeGen, I can finally adjust the blade's three-dimensional structure, such as its meridional flow path, as well as its thickness and angle distributions at different spanwise locations. This is conveniently accomplished using the interactive graphics window or by entering specific control points. I'll modify the inlet section by moving the hub closer to the axis of rotation. As well, I'll vary the blade's thickness. Once I am satisfied with the blade's geometry, I can generate a mesh in TurboGrid and use it as the basis for a CFD simulation using CFX. TurboGrid provides mesh generation tailored specifically to the needs of plated turbo machinery components, generating high quality hex meshes in a highly automated fashion. TurboGrid requires minimal user input, identifying geometry features and selecting a suitable mesh topology for a given blade design automatically. User controls are available when needed. For example, I want to have the mesh at the blade hub split appropriately for this case, so I'll select the Split Mesh Regions at Trailing Edge option in the Topology Set object. I need to make some adjustments to the mesh data to produce an error-free mesh. First, I'll increase the global size of the mesh by increasing the global size factor. Next, I'll adjust the boundary layer refinement control factor base and ratio. Finally, I'll disable the target maximum expansion rate. I can now unsuspend the topology set and generate my mesh. You can then visualize the results of the three-dimensional mesh at various locations. For example, I'm going to inspect the near wall boundary layer resolution near the leading edge. Notice that the element height is consistent in the direction normal to the blade and the hub. Once the mesh quality has been verified, I can take the mesh into the turbo specific setup in CFX, which is tailored to efficiently set up turbo machinery flow simulations. Within this tailored setup, I can enter the machine type, define the axis of rotation, and then I can set up the rotational speed. In the physical definition panel, I can choose water as my working fluid and then specify a mass flow rate. You'll notice that some solver parameters can be found here, which allow me to control the solver during calculation. The next option is Interface Definition. As you can see, the periodic interfaces have been defined automatically. For this case, I'll accept the default periodic boundaries. Standard boundary conditions are also defined automatically. Now, I am going to modify and extend the default specifications so that the boundaries corresponding to the stationary housing at the shroud, and downstream of the impeller at the hub, 
are properly included. Then, a new boundary called R1 Hub Outlet must be created. This boundary represents the stationary wall sections in the housing. I can leave the tailored turbo mode and, if required, make further adjustments to the setup in the general mode. Now, I'll designate some solver controls and then specify a monitor variable. Tightening the convergence control parameter will ensure that the solution produced is at a desired level of accuracy. Now I can define an expression which describes the head produced by the impeller. Defining an expression in CFX is meant to be a quick and intuitive process. I can either use the drop down menu, like so, or I can simply write out the expression in the CFX expression language. Here's a comparison between the expression, written in the expression language, and normal mathematical syntax. I'll set up a monitor, which will allow me to monitor the head produced by the impeller as the calculation progresses until it converges to a final solution. This concludes this demonstration of part 1 of the Turbo System Overview. In part 2, I'll demonstrate how to solve the problem I set up and how to extract the speed line from the resulting solution.